This is Mr. Anderson for Kellogg Community College and we're going to be looking at the second example of a sample problem that will be similar to the one on the test to look at classes, boundaries, frequencies, and cumulative frequencies of frequency histograms and frequency polygons and frequency ogive graphs. Um, now I'm going to go through the process um, of doing this problem from start to finish. I'd, I'd like you to try to do this problem before you watch me do it as we have covered one in the previous session. So um, let's pause the video and if you can fill out as much of this as you can based on the previous video, you can use this to check your answer. Um, the maximum uh, in this graph is going to be 57. That is the highest amount of grams of uh, protein in fast food taken from the doctor's pocket calorie fat, kyber, calorie, fat and kyber, carbohydrate counter uh, manual there. Uh, the minimum um, amount of protein in one of these fast food items is 12 grams. The range would be subtracting your max minus min. So to find range, we're going to take our max and subtract the minimum. And doing so gives you the answer of 45. Now what's important about the range is to figure out your width or spacing in your uh, classes by the number of cases that you need. Um, to take uh, to figure out your spacing over here for your class, you take the range and then divide that by the number of cases you have. So range divided by cases. And that would give me 45 divided by 6, which is approximately 8. Um, we're always going to use whole numbers here um, to show our individual spacing. And if you're always uh, curious about rounding, it might be um, more conservative to round um, up or down depending on your situation. Um, I rounded uh, in this case uh, to an 8 because that way we're probably more likely to get our maximum in with uh, spaces of 8. So our first class is going to be from 12 to 19. Now I think what's tough um, doing this from left to right is tough um, because you, you may not be sure how I ended at 19. Um, think of it this way. If I move vertically from the top to bottom, starting with my minimum, 12, 20, I would be moving up by 8, which is the number I received over here based on the number of cases I needed. Um, so your range divided by your cases gives you the space you need for your classes. So here's 12, 20, 28, and then we're going to go 36. And again, just we're adding 8 to each one of these from that number right here. So 36, 44, and then 52. Now these will go up but do not include this next number here. So this is 20 to 27. So that's why I did not go from 20 um, from 12 to 20. I went 12 to 19, 20 to 27, 28 to 35, 36 to 43, 44 to 51, and 52 to 60. Now class on the previous um, notes, you notice that class can have no overlap, but boundaries should. And boundaries go um, basically one extra decimal and five below, five up. So going down from 12, one decimal would be 11.5. And going up one decimal from 19 would be 19.5. And then you'll notice this dropping down a 0.5 would be 19.5 to 27.5. So round down, round up. Um, so you can see that there's going to be no overlap as we go from one side of this chart to the other. And as this rounds up to 36.5, uh, oops, sorry, 35.5, because 35 with plus 0.5 is 35.5, then this is going to be 35.5 to 43.5, 43.5 to 51.5, 51.5 to 60.5. Frequency wise. Um, now what I've done uh, to save you some time here is I looked to see how many actual fast food items were between these boundaries of grams of protein. And so this would there were seven between 11.5, 19.5, 17,10 uh, in this third category. Uh, and then in the last three very few in the high protein items, which was four in this category and one in each of these classes here. Uh, this will give you a total of 40 different foods, um, 40 different in our little data sets here. There were four rows of 10. Uh, and then we're going to use the cumulative frequency for the ogive. Um, so we take the number and just add the, the, pre, the next number to it. So there were seven 
fast food items that were less than or equal to 19.5. There were 24 items that were less than or equal to 27.5. That's basically, at this stage, if you want to get less than or equal to 27.5 grams of uh, protein, you're definitely looking at 24 items. Then we add the 10 to the 24, 34, which is less than or equal to 35.5. Then we have um, 38, which is less than or equal to 43.5. Then 39, which is less than or equal to 51.5. And then finally 40, the total you know that we have here are going to be less than or equal to 60.5 grams of protein. Now what I'm going to do is use this data here, at least the I'm going to use the class and the frequency um, to do work with my histogram and uh, then I'll modify that for the polygon and then I'll use my cumulative frequency for the OGIVE. So let's uh, not move the screen here and take a look at the frequency histogram. Um, it looks like we're going to put a little lightning bolt here because we're not going to start it. If, this is technically zero here, but we're going to start with our minimum, which is at 12. Now, I should move by my numbers down this column here. So that spacing that I found over here, which goes 12, 20, 28, 36, so on and so forth, we're going to actually go by that down here at the bottom. 12, 20, 28, 36, 44, 52, and we should end at 60 because we have to have one extra tick mark here because there's one fast food item between the 52 and 60. Now proper scale is important here since we have 40 pieces of data and 17 is our maximum we can't really go by one so going by twos would be more appropriate. 2, 4, 6, 8, sorry 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So in a histogram we see how many items were between this certain um, domain here on my x-axis and we had 7 between 12 up to 19 so uh, that would be 7 so we go 2, 4, 6 and halfway between 6 and 8 is 7 right there. It's probably good to put the number on top if you really want to help me grade this on your test. The next column will be pretty tall it's at 17 so I'm gonna go to 10 and then 12, 14, 16, hold on, 12, 14, 16, 17, there we go. I'm going to try to make that as nice as possible. So I'm going to put a 17 right there so I can see that. The next one's going to be pretty easy, 10 on that. There were 10 fast food items with, um, uh, let's see, protein grams between 27.5 and 35.5. Then we go to four, this is going to be pretty small here, two tick marks up since each tick mark equals two items. And then our last two, there's one item between 44 and 52 grams of protein and one item between 52 and 60 grams of protein. Again, labeling is probably important, so this is protein by grams or grams of protein. And then here this would be your frequency, which is just another way of saying count or how many times something happened. Uh, let's go take, now we're going to do something similar to this uh, when we take a look at the, um, the frequency uh, polygon. Um, now when I move this down it's going to erase so make sure you get this on your worksheet here. Since I'm going to be referring back to this I'm not going to be able to scroll up and see it again. Okay, so, okay we'll do these two and then be done with the video. Alright, so frequency polygon. Now in the frequency polygon um, one of the major mistakes is that people down here use the same scale as the histogram above it. Remember the histogram went by you know eights here what you know it started off with uh, two sorry 12 and then went to 20 and then went to 28. Well that's not right for the frequency polygon. Here what you need are the medians. The medians of 12 and 20 or what number is between 12 and 20. Two ways to do this. You can add up these two numbers and divide by two or you can think of the number that's exactly between 12 and 20 and that number between 12 and 20 is 16. And then you would add 8 to each of these because um, 16 and 8 is 24 which happens to be the median of these two, 20 and 28. The middle number is 24. Uh, then this next number is going to be 32. This next number is going to be 40. This is going to be 48. This is going to be 56. And then we have to go one beyond it, so 64. 
So again, that's by taking the medians of the numbers that we had up here on our um, frequency histogram. This is how we make the scale here. So make sure that these are the medians. This is still in protein by the gram. And this is still going to be a frequency. But the frequency polygon charts look a little bit different. In fact, right above the 16 is going to be the quantity that it appeared between 12 and 20. And then that would be 7. Now we're going to use the same Y scale as we did before. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then this is up here is 20. So the heights are going to match the original um, picture that we have up here, but there will this will not be bar. This will not look like a bar graph. This will look like a plot over time. Um, so two, four, six, seven. So there's a dot there. Uh, then we go all the way up to 17. So uh, 20, 18, 17, right there. And then we go down to 10, which is easy to plot. Then we go to four. Then we go to uh, 1 and 1. And now you can see why we need this over here, because as I connect the dots, um, this, I'm going to make these dots a little bit larger here so you can see where they're going. Um, the reason why we go uh, one in, one space in each direction is that these will actually hit the ground. They'll level out, so it'll look like a mountain. Uh, plots over time don't necessarily look like mountains like this because they don't actually get connected to the ground, but a frequency polygon uh, graph does. Now with the frequency OGIVE, we go back and copy the same um, scales we did for the histogram up above. So 12, 20, 28, 30, 44, 52, and 60. But in this, we're going to take a look at the number as it climbs up to 40. So this top of the graph has to be a 40, not a 20. So every single tick mark is going to move up by 4. So this is 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So as we do this, um, there will be no height at 12. We're going to mark that dot over here because there were seven items that were less than or equal to 19.5. Again, you're looking at the top of your worksheet right now. And since there were seven items, the dot will be about here, which is a little bit less than eight on your y-axis. So this here is going to be seven. So we'll put a seven up there. And that probably would be good to put that up here. I, I'm going to actually go back right now and fill this in. All right, so you can see the differences there. This would be 0 and 0. We don't have to label those. So this is 7. Now for 28, this skyrockets all the way up to 24, which takes us to this tick mark above the 20. So here's 24 right there. Now if we go to the next tick marks, it takes us up to 34, when we're already maxed, almost close to being maxed out. Um, so this is uh, 36, so 34 would be right in between the two of them. So here's 34. Ah, here's 34. And then as we get closer here, this takes it to 38, which is again halfway between these two tick marks there. So 38. It's going to be indistinguishable uh, based on the graphics on your screen there. So 38, 39, and then all the way to, to 40 by the time we get to the 60 right there. So 38, 39, and 40. Um, it'll take a little bit of practice, and if you notice that you started here with 7, you'll notice that you'll end too early. And, and I've had some students you know, start to do these OGIVs from the back, you know, start plotting this from the end, 40, 39, 38. And it's okay to start drawing them from the back if that helps you out. So this is still frequency, but instead of just putting frequency here, we should put cumulative, or an abbreviation that stands for cumulative frequency because it's adding up to 100% of our, our stuff for protein in grams. All right, thank you, and I hope that worked out well for you. If you, again, if you have any extra questions, please let me know, and thank you for watching.